All right, welcome. We in the masjid of higher learning. So briefly, I'm going to make this tape and I want to just give a little encouragement to whoever may be listening to this at this moment. One thing that we all have to understand is that your spiritual journey or your soul journey, whatever you want to call it, it's a very, very individual personal and private matter and it's a very very serious matter in addition to that no matter how much someone helps you only you can answer the questions that you that your soul has asked you because we all wonder certain things we all have had certain experiences and certain environments we may have been born into we may have questioned certain things that happened in our childhood we may have questioned you know how we got into certain type of careers, certain type of relationships. So in other words, there are a lot of occurrences that have happened in our lives that that create questions, you know, and a lot of these questions, they come from your inner self. What I like to call soul or what I call in these tapes, but sometimes your soul, it creates these circumstances and questions for you. So it'll send you on this quest to having a reunion with it. Now, this soul is not outside of you, meaning that it's not necessarily like you have to travel to a certain location to reef to have a reunion with this soul. But you have to go through certain experiences to refine that soul within yourself. So, for example, earlier I was watching Fresh Prince and it was an episode where his girlfriend, Lisa, um, had to save him when they was in a bowling alley because this man basically was about to beat him up. So Will was trying to become this martial artist so now he can look like he's a tough guy and protect lisa so he went and found this dojo and it was this martial artist master in there and the martial artist master was basically giving him a parable of this man who had a sensei or whatever and the sensei told him that his greatest opponent will be this monstrous dragon so this man went on this whole journey all around the world trying to find this dragon to slay and on his deathbed, when he was an old man, he finally found out where that dragon was. And that dragon had been inside of him the whole time. So in most of these mythological stories or, you know, whatever you want to call them, when they talk about this certain type of, you know, demonic, monstrous creature that's trying to attack the hero. A lot of the times they're talking about these certain character traits and quality traits that we possess as individuals that are trying to stop us from answering these questions of the soul and they're trying to create a lot of confusion and waste a lot of time and these are our own individual personalities um traits attributes etc so that means that we're our own enemy majority of the time and any external enemy more than likely is some form of a projection of some internal trait that is negative that you possess okay so the point is is that Whatever kind of questions that your soul is going to ask you, no external being can answer those questions better than you can. That's why I kind of find it funny when people go to a quote unquote fortune teller or, you know, these types of people. And also, too, let me preface it and say this, because a lot of us have a hard time with listening comprehension. I'm not beating up, demonizing or against anyone's spiritual or religious practices or customs, whether they be monotheistic pantheistic uh, polytheistic whatever it is that you're into in your personal life to help you um, improve your condition then hey man all power to you all right so whatever it is you deal with that's on you you know i don't have nothing against whatever nobody's doing that's on them i got my own way i'm on i got my own path they have their own path but getting back to what i was saying um and what point what i was about to make give me a few seconds hold on oh that's what we were talking about yeah so you know, so that monstrous enemy is within you. So you go to a fortune teller and you think that this fortune teller or this person outside of you who's going to ask you an interview, interview you basically trying to get a little bit of information. And out of that little bit of information they give you, they're going to try to now come up with an answer or a solution. But it's only a snapshot. They don't have all the nuanced details of what really happened in your life. And more than likely, when you go to this fortune teller, you only end up with them either a few minutes. You can either be in there with them a few hours, even a few days. But they're not with you on an everyday basis to know the ins and outs and the details 
of the questions that you're going to have created in your life. So if that's the case, that means that the answers they give you, they could generally sound good and they could have good general information. And they may even have something that's very, very specific to you that could be used. But you can't get mad if they don't have all the details and answers that you need because they don't have a full scope of what's going on in your own personal life. So what am I saying? What I'm what I'm saying is, is that you can answer your own questions better than somebody outside of you. What it is, is a lot of times we're lazy and we don't want to put in the background homework to look deeper into our own situation, get all the details that we need and go into some type of state of analysis. And then we come to our own conclusions that are logically sound. And then people outside of us that we know will give us a good um, commentary or summary on what it is that we're saying. We bounce it off of them, let them hear about it. And then you see what they say in response. And then you move forward with that. But in other words, you have to be able to come to your own conclusions for your own life. You have to be able to answer your own questions. So if you're going on the Internet, if you, you know, looking for some false prophet or some false messiah or for some false leader, for somebody to come in and answer your questions, what you're doing is, is you setting yourself up to get ready to follow the Dajjal, as I like to call him, or this Antichrist type of figure. That's what you're doing. Because let me tell you what the Antichrist is. It is an entity that loves people who are not accountable for themselves. It's an entity that loves to think for you. It's an entity that loves to feel for you. It's an entity that loves to tell you how you need to do things. So it likes to use you as a puppet. It wants to basically take your free will and get you to do its bidding. And, it, and it'll have access to use you for that if you're not being accountable for yourself. That's why a lot of these people are following these different um, cults out here. And they get confused by these false leaders out here, whether it be Elijah Muhammad, whether it be Drew Ali, whether it be Martin Luther King, whether it be Tupac or all these other people that so-called black folks, you know, have have propped up as these quote unquote leaders. But the truth is, is that most of our people don't want to do their own homework and clean up and be accountable for their own life. They just don't. They want to go to somebody else, give them a little bit of information and just think that with a snap of a finger, they're going to be able to clean up everything and they're going to have all the solutions and all the answers to their life. And that remind me of the Fresh Prince episode, because when he went in there and he was talking to the um, it was an episode of Fresh Prince and, and, and he went in there, he's talking to the man and, and Will's thinking that he's going to be able to just learn martial arts in just a few seconds. You know, it's like you're not going to be able to do it that fast. It takes years and years and years of practice to become a black belt, you know, supreme martial artist. So you can't just snap your fingers or you can't just go and talk to a sensei for a few minutes or you can't just go and skim through the Bible or the Quran or you can't just go and pray to some ancestor real quick or you can't just go and listen to some YouTube tape and think now that you just got all the answers. It doesn't work like that, man. It doesn't work. The, the thing that you all have to accept is that your condition or, or whatever it is that, that or whatever circumstance you got going on in your life, your own soul has you going through that. Whether you understand what your soul is or not. And also, too, let me say this. If you feel like that going within yourself, shutting down your own ego, shutting down your own carnal animal desires and trying to actually realize the reality of your soul. If you feel like you don't know how to do that or if you feel like you can't do that, well, maybe you don't have a soul. Maybe you are a just side. Maybe you are a lifeless body. A.K.A. a zombie. That's a mere projection or you just may be a mere image or a mere form, but you may not even be a real person. That may be what you are. See, I don't know. I don't know what you are. I don't know what your intention is to be on this planet. I don't know what your objective is. When I meet people, I have to ask them questions. When I meet people, I ask them, who are you? What is it that you do? Why are you here? Why is this your circumstance? And I expect people to be able to answer it. So when people say man should know thyself or woman should know thyself, meaning that you should be able to answer questions when people ask you stuff. Like if somebody asks me questions about my own personal life, 
whether that be my, my spiritual life or my physical life, I have answers for you because I've already done the analysis. I've already done that daily homework, that daily introspective um, looking within myself to answer these questions. All the traumas I've been through, all the trials and tribulations, all the tests and the things I've been through in my life. Where I used to wonder, well, why did this happen or why did this play out this way and things of that type of nature? I've, I've done the homework to, to, to try to figure these things out and I've come to my own conclusions and all of them have not even fully unfolded yet. You see? But in other words, I'm not looking to anybody outside of myself to answer these things for me. I'm not. Even when you go to a therapist and I'm not saying that people that go to a therapist is a wrong thing. So going to therapy is good if that's something that you need to do. And if it, and if it will work for you, that's a good thing to go do. But it's just like even going to a therapy. When you, when you go into a therapist, they're going to ask you a bunch of questions about your situation. You're going to give them some details and then they're going to give you a conclusion. Now, that conclusion can either be spot on. Or it may not be spot on. But a lot of the times, you know why we go to those therapists and we feel better when we leave? Because that therapist is objective. They don't have any kind of emotional tie to your life situations. So they can see them through a, a clear lens. They can see, see them very, very objectively. They don't, they're not choosing sides in your situations. So they're able to give you a judgment that's pretty rational and pretty logical and pretty sound. And a lot of the times we can't do that for ourselves because we'd be so caught up emotionally into our situations. We don't know how to pause, silence the ego, silence our lower feelings of how we feel, silence that pain and trauma and try to go beneath, go beyond that to get to the true core of our true real self. Because that's what all your healing is. Healing is. That's what all your answers are within your true self. So before I move forward, before y'all come in my comment section, leaving silly ass comments, I'm not going to lie to you, man. Like a lot of times, man, I'm going to just put a laughing emoji, man, because I be laughing in real life. I really do. I be sitting here rolling up the pink runts or the gelato or whatever it is I'm on. You know what I'm saying? Maybe communicating with one of my lady friends or whatever. And then I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this and I'm like, what the hell is this person talking about? And, and I be laughing, you know, I be laughing, man, because it's like, man, you don't know about leaving me this comment, man. You, you sound lost like you sound very lost. You sound like you don't have no instructions, no guidance, no type of directions. And I'm not and I'm not saying that to sound to make you sound like you're a bad person or I'm above you or any of that because I'm not above anybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm a regular man. But. You just got to understand, man, with some of them comments, man, it make y'all look. It make y'all look bad, man. And you don't need to be going out like that, man, because people see that, man. And it make you look, you know, illiterate It make you look like you didn't listen It make you look like you lack reading comprehension skills. And yeah, it's not a good look, man. And, it, and to me, it shows me that you have not figured out some of the key questions you have in your life that really may bother you. Like when you sitting on your bed at night and you and the, and the lights are off and before you went to bed and, you know, you just staring up at the ceiling, but you kind of rethinking about either what happened that day or certain things from the past or whatever you may be pondering on. By leaving me certain comments, I can tell you still ain't got the answers to those questions and you still wondering. That's why you get mad when you go on YouTube or you go to these other people and you look at it, look into them for answers. But when they don't say what you want to hear. You get mad. You go to the therapist, you go to the psychologist, you go to the fortune teller person, you go to the astrologist, you go to, you know, whatever it is you people be going to, man. And then when you ask these people to try to get some quick answer, some microwave answer to, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, however old you are, that many years of questions, you're not going to get no quick answer like that, man. You just not. You know, so that's why I'm saying, like, it's best to be your own psychologist. It's best to be your own therapist. It really is. And it's also too. There is nothing wrong with going to external therapists and psychologists. There is nothing wrong with that. 
because you may need to do that. Maybe you need somebody that can be objective and help you evaluate the situation and you can come to a proper conclusion because maybe you too emotionally tied up in it and you can't see the forest from the trees. See, you may have that problem. See, me individually, see, my life has been different and that's why I'm a different way. You know, I have been forced to be accountable for a lot of shit in my life at such an early age when I wasn't ready for it. And I'm going to kind of talk about this and then we're going to wrap it up. So briefly, um, when I was contemplating, man, it made me think about King David and why King David was not allowed to build the temple. Because as I said, when you get to asking yourself certain questions and you start wondering, why am I here? Who am I? You start looking at the things I'm, you're good at. You start, you start being able to see, okay, I know what direction. I know where I'm supposed to be going in my own personal life. All right. And once you know that and you start moving in that way, the soul is now going to open up that, that reality for you. Because when, like, for example, the soul opens up various realities for you. So when you have different experiences in your life, these are various different realities that have been opened up to you. You know, you may get a new relationship, you get a new job, you move to a new place and just different things that happen. These are new realities that are being opened up for you to experience. All right. Um, so let, let's read this real quick. Now, this is coming out of First Chronicles 22. So this is coming out of First Chronicles in the Bible, if you want to know where I'm getting this from. But this is just talking about intention, objective and knowing what it is you're supposed to do. And um, and knowing when that's it. So, for example, when I make these tapes and I write these books, I know at the end of the day, a lot of this is going over a lot of people's heads. I know that a small percentage of people probably really are listening to it and understanding it and using it and applying it in their own life. And it's working for those people. Um, and I also know that most of what I'm doing, especially socially now. I do want to see so-called black people in a better circumstance and position. And I want to help so-called black people answer a lot of these questions that they have as it pertains to their culture, their heritage. Because honestly, I don't like the way that so-called black people have been done. Um, we have been severely lied to. So, you know, you got a lot of so-called black people that may think that they're from Africa and things of, these na things of this nature. And I'm not going to even lie to you. I don't look down on them people because they were lied to at such an intense rate and level that even the most educated of us still have them type of beliefs. So when I see the way how our people were severely deceived, you know, something inside of me doesn't like that. And it wants to see that change. So I have to go to war. Listen to what I'm about to say, you all. I have to go to war with the authors of confusion and deception, whether they be physical or non-physical. And I'm going to tell you just because I've answered a lot of questions in my personal life. I'm very, very good at going to war with people, both physically and non-physically. I've always been good at it and I always will be. I'm a war strategist. I'm a war general. That's what I do. I grew up doing it in the streets and now I'm doing it as a grown man in the business, financial, corporate world and also in the spiritual world as well. So that's what I'm here for. I'm here to basically... You know how you have John the Baptist, who was the forerunner to the Christ, where I'm a forerunner, but it's more so to kind of as a awesome war shit. So look at it like this. If there is a new kingdom and empire that so-called black people are going to create one day in North America in the future, this old kingdom has to be destroyed, blown up, and a lot of it has to die out. So I'm here right now to not create the new kingdom. But to help destroy the old kingdom. Let me repeat that one more time. I'm not here. I did not incarnate in this physical body in this lifetime to help create the new kingdom. I'm here to help destroy the old one. The one that has the so-called black people and everybody else, because it's not just the so-called blacks, but that old kingdom that got everybody confused. I'm here to help destroy that kingdom. OK. That's what I'm here to do. So. Once I help destroy everything that needs to be destroyed, then those who have an intention and an objective to restore 
and build things up, those new so-called black people that'll be here in the future, then they'll be able to do what they need to do. But they won't be able to do that if I don't do my job here right now in 2021. And my job is to help destroy the old kingdom. OK, so let's read about David. So it says, why did King Solomon build the temple rather than his father, David? The answer is found in Chronicles when David speaks to his son and says to him. So let's look at this quote of what King David, who was the king of Israel, what he said to his son, Solomon. My son, I wanted to build a house for the Lord. Excuse me, my son, I wanted to build a house for the name of the Lord, my God. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, quote, you have shed much blood and fought great battles. You shall not build a house for my name, for you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. But you will have a son who will be a man at rest. For I will give him rest from all his enemies on all sides. Solomon will be his name and I shall confer peace and quiet on Israel in his time. In quote, first Chronicles 22. So as you can see right here that King David was told by the Lord. That you will not build my house or a.k.a. you will not build the temple of Jerusalem because you have too much bloodshed on your hands. When King David was restoring or trying to build up and establish the kingdom of Israel, there was a lot of war he had to participate in. A lot of those tribes that were still in Canaan or quote unquote Palestine were beefing with the Israelites or the old Shemitic people. And David pretty much went to war with a majority of them. And after David went to a war with majority of those, you know, various kings and those tribes, um, he was able to establish Israel a little bit, but he didn't, he wasn't able to see the time of tranquility and peace. He was not able to see the time of prosperity. He was not able to see the time of great wealth and great gold. He was not able to see the time where all the houses of Israel were under their own vine and fig tree. King David was not able to see that because he had too much blood on his hand. So King David had a different objective than Solomon. David was was brought into incarnation to kill. Solomon was brought into incarnation to help build up. So when I sit here and I'm telling you that I'm here to help destroy this kingdom, that is my objective. That is my intention. I'm not going to lie to you. That's that's what it is. Even when I make these tapes and these videos, these books or whatever the case may be. Whoever's listening to it and understands it, good. But whoever doesn't, I'm not about to put in no extra effort or extra work to help you figure it out. That's on you. Because I'm, I'm here to basically, um, <laughs> for lack of better words, kill, steal, and destroy. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to let go these spiritual 7.62s at all my ops, whoever they may be. You know what I'm saying? And that's just a fact. That's just a fact. So I'm letting off the 7.6 by twos in real life and I'm letting them off spiritually as well. I'm letting them off both physically and spiritually, whichever one the higher power lead me to lead them off. So whether you the physical gen or whether you some spiritual gen, whether you the physical evil one or whether you a spiritual evil one, Blackbeard got some for your ass. So I already know that. There is certain things I'm probably not going to experience in my lifetime. And I'm cool with that. My heart don't even desire to experience that shit because I wasn't even brought here for that. Therefore, my personality ain't even wired to want to even experience and feel that shit. I actually get high off of the shit I'm here for. I, I get high off of keeping my foot up these folks ass. I get high off of going to war or whoever I need to go to war with. That's just what the case is. So when I have offspring... My son, he'll be able to be like Solomon. He won't have to have all that blood on his hands. He won't have to, you know, try to restore the mind of his own family. You know what I'm saying? You know, Blackbeard, I don't come from, I don't come from no prosperity, nothing like that. The same way how the Israelites was, was, didn't have no, no wealth. The same way how the Israelites were poor. The same way the Israelites was wandering in the, in the deserts of Egypt 
for 40 years and they didn't have their own land. They didn't have a promised land. They didn't have their own businesses. That's what Blackbeard was born into. My brother grew up in a, a shack in South Georgia. We had land, but we came from poverty. We didn't have no resources. My grandmother had seven children. They had one bedroom. Do you, do you hear what I'm sitting here saying to you? And by the time I was born, my mother had advanced herself enough to where we had an apartment. And then she continued to advance herself a little bit more. And we moved into a two story house on the south side of Atlanta. And I had, you know, other younger siblings myself. So the point is, is that I don't I don't come from no type of silver or golden spoon. My family don't come from riches and wealth. We didn't come up having no type of material gratification at all. We always had just enough to get by and that was it. So you think I want to keep seeing my bloodline live that way? No. So I got another objective I'm here for. I'm here to fuck shit up. I am. And everything I and everything that I gain from help destroy this fucking empire. I'll leave in my family estate. And they will use that to build the new kingdom. Because David was not supposed to build a new kingdom. Solomon was just like Blackbeard ain't supposed to build a new kingdom. Blackbeard Jr. or Blackbeard III. One of them young niggas going to do it. But I ain't, I ain't here for that. I'm here to let these 7.6 by twos off on anybody I got to go off on. And I don't give a fuck who it is, spiritually or physically. So I just wanted to make this, man, and put this out here that you need to be accountable for your own personal life, whoever you may be. And this is not an attack on anybody personally or individually. This goes for all of us. It didn't even go. It goes for me. I have to answer my own questions, because as I said, I've answered a lot of things in my life, but they haven't all fully unfolded yet, meaning that. I don't have the physical manifestation in front of me that is actually the answer I've been looking for. I've contemplated on it and I've come to certain conclusions. Why was my mother and family, why did they have their own land but they grew up in a shack? That was a question I used to have. But I've come to certain conclusions. So you have to do that for your own personal life, man. And um, you're either going to be able to do that or you won't. But the point is, and we're going to leave it with this, only you can answer your own questions. No one else can ask them for you. They can give you a little bit of instruction and guidance, but they don't have all the nuanced details. They don't know all the ins and 